so i'll discuss a few general things about solving <coughs> problems using newton's laws of motion and then uh, we will come to the discussion of the exercise and all that okay let's let's uh, continue a little bit ahead with some of the methods of solving problems and then we'll come back to the discussion of uh, assignment number 2 I know a lot of questions will be pending in assignment two, but no worry. We'll first complete the discussion and come back to that. So, first thing we'll discuss today is a method of solving problems called the free body diagram method. Free body diagram method for the application of Newton's second law. So in this, what we do is, if there is you know an object, for example, is on the ground, and a number of forces are acting on it, F1, F2, F3. It has a mass. It's on the ground, etc. So what we do is we make a free body diagram, which we'll from now on refer to as FBD. Wherein the body in consideration is represented by a particle or a point mass. So that's the first step of making the free body diagram. Then secondly, all forces acting on it are represented by vector arrows with the particle as the origin. So for example, for this situation over here, in the free body diagram that we'll make, we'll represent that mass by a particle, or the mass of that body, or that body will be represented by a point mass like this. Then. And then all the forces which are acting on it, in this case, those forces would tend to be the weight, the normal reaction. Some force F2, some force F1. You can see these forces. Then this force F3. They're all represented by vector arrows. Which are originating from that particle. So this is the first two steps of the free body diagram method. It's something very intuitive and something that indirectly we've been doing in the last couple of lectures also. But we're now just organizing the method. Okay. So nothing else is shown in the free body diagram. Like it's lying on a surface. We'll not draw the surface over here. Instead, we'll show the normal reaction that the surface is applying. Okay. And we'll make sure that all the forces which are acting in, on the body, they are shown in the diagram. Okay. So this one is F1. Whatever, but the, the forces are shown in the same order as the actual situation. This is it. So that's it. Okay. Now, next step is very critical. After you have shown all the forces, a 
and appropriate system of access is chosen that is x y z coordinate frame okay. and the forces are resolved so here for example the body is lying on a horizontal surface so it might make appropriate sense to take the horizontal direction as our x axis and take the vertical direction as our y axis so we will select this as our x axis we will select the vertical as our y axis and then the forces are there. so once you've done this we'll have to basically redraw this in such a way that we show the forces in component form especially if there are too many forces it becomes a bit tricky to resolve in the same diagram so now on this body instead of showing f2 and f1 like this we will show their components so this will become f2's x component whatever that was this will become f2's y component this will become f1's y component so it will become f1's x component plus there was mg there was that other force f3 and there was normal there now so many different forces will be there so there's normal reaction acting vertically there is f2's y component there is f2's x component there is f1's x component there is f1's y component there is weight and there is f so whichever forces so you know, for example if this angle was alpha you can see that f2's x component would have been f2 cos alpha and f2's y component would have been f2 sin alpha similarly if this angle was beta you know see f1's x component would have been f1 cos theta and f1's y component would have been downwards so i don't need to put a minus sign because i have shown the direction downwards but it would have been in magnitude f1 sin beta like this so this is how we implement this step, the third step that an appropriate system of axis is chosen and the forces are resolved so once you resolve all the forces the final step the newton second law is solved in component form that is we write that net force is equal to mass into acceleration that is solved into component form that summation of forces along the x axis becomes mass into x component of acceleration summation of forces along the y axis becomes mass into y component of acceleration and summation of forces along the z axis if any becomes mass into z component of acceleration like that okay so just take a look at this you need not make a detailed note of this also because you will get these notes more importantly we will pay attention to applying these steps very carefully in this very simple order in each and every problem that we solve so that it becomes part of our method so from this point onwards any any and everything that we solve in newton's laws and the following chapter friction which will be actually a continuation of newton's laws but just it is divided into two sections newton's laws for smooth surfaces and newton's laws applied where there are rough surfaces and friction so in both these chapters we will be meticulously applying this free body diagram method to solve each and every problem
guys so first step so the forces acting on the body the body being represented like a particle second step choose a coordinate frame and resolve the forces and third step solve newton's laws in component form Okay, so let us see an example based on this. Okay, so this is a system of two blocks which are attached by a very light thread. Okay, so this is what is called a light but inextensible thread. So inextensible ka matlab kya hai? that it does not stretch. Unlike a rubber band. Or an elastic material, it does not stretch. And this, is of course, a smooth surface. So, friction will come into our picture at a later stage. So, in the beginning, in this chapter, the first part of Newton's laws of motion, we will be studying everything with the assumption that the surfaces are smooth. So, here, given to us that. The masses are suppose 10 kilograms and 15 kilograms. Okay. Now what we are doing is the system is initially at rest, but some external agent starts applying, starts pulling this, but with a force like this. So an external agent starts applying a force. magnitude let us say 25 newtons is continuously applied at theta equal to 37 degrees as shown above so we want to find The accelerations of the blocks the tension in the thread and the normal reactions on each block. by the floor, we take G as 10 meters per second square while doing the calculation. 
Okay, so just understand the question, then we will start with the analysis. What happens here? Okay, so let's start by understanding the behavior of the system the moment I start applying the force. The moment I start pulling this block with a force like this, what happens is there is no friction. There is no friction on the ground. So, force this has a horizontal component. And that component has a tendency to make this block start moving like this. Has a tendency to pull at this block. It has a tendency to start moving like this. So the moment that happens, the block is tugging against the spring. Understand it? So the thread is getting stretched. It has a tendency to get stretched. Of course, it's inextensible, so its like length will not change. But now it's developing a, a tension because it's stretched. So the thread will apply an equal and opposite force like this. Yeah, so I'll verify your answer. So the thread will apply an equal and opposite force on M2, which is the tension in the thread. Because M2 is pulling against the thread. Okay. And because it's a light thread, the tension is going to be uniform in the thread. So it's also going to pull on M1 in this direction. So what is actually happening is, if you think about the thread, you think of the thread. The thread is getting pulled by M2 on this side with a certain force. So that force is nothing but the tension in the thread. And it's getting pulled on this side by M1 with a certain force and that will be nothing but the tension. Why? Because the thread's mass is tending to zero. So if its mass is tending to zero, the tension on the two sides must be equal. Because net force on it must be zero. So F must be equal to F prime. That is the uniform tension T because mass tending to zero implies that the net force acting on the block I mean on the thread must be zero. So that's why the amount of tension now in this diagram I'm not showing the tension acting on the thread I'm showing that the thread is having what action on block M2 it is pulling it back with tension T and what effect it is having on M1 it is pulling it forward with the tensional force C. and why these two tensions are equal because the thread is light, so it is its mass is tending to zero. So this point is clear to you. And as a result of that, now this block also tends to move forwards. Now kinematics why you see what will happen. Thread ka length constant there. So that means the distance between M1 and M2 has to remain fixed. It can't be increasing or decreasing with time. So if this sets off with an acceleration E, this acceleration will also tend to zero. Yeah, good question, uh, Yashovardhan, that what if the mass is not tending to zero? So, if the mass is not tending to zero, if it's what we call a heavy rope or a heavy chain or something like that, then the tension will not be uniform. The tension will be different at the two ends. But we will come to that later. How to deal with that situation, we will come to that later. But here it's a massless thread. So, we will keep in mind this fact that a massless or a very light thread will have uniform tension throughout. Yeah, Dhruv, doesn't matter you didn't write the question. I'll be providing you with the notes. This is why I said that understand the question. Okay, then I will explain to you. Understand the question, then we will solve the question on the board. 
then you'll have plenty of time later to take down the question. Okay. So, here the important thing is any massless or what is called very light thread always has uniform tension throughout its length because of this reason because it's massless <clears throat> so the net force on the string must be zero so that's the the force on the both the sides both the ends of this thread has to be z has to be balancing each other so the tension becomes uniform okay. heavy ropes or chains may have it's not necessary but they may have variable tension depending on the situation and we will come back to that later okay but initially we are dealing with massless threads or very light threads okay so that's one point which is important here the second point which is important to understand is that the thread being inextensible that is of fixed length implies that the distance between the blocks m1 and m2 is constant okay so therefore they have identical accelerations This is another important point to understand. Uh, ask me normal reaction ka answer correct nahi beta. Now, you have to make a free body diagram and understand in detail. So friction is not present. Okay, the smooth surface means that there's no friction. Okay. So these two points are vital to understand over here. Now having done that, we will now make the free body diagrams. Okay, so next step will be that. We look at the free body diagrams of M1 and M2. So let's start with the free body diagram of M2. So M2 page will compare with the diagram above what all forces are acting. There was an external force. It was acting like this. I think the force was how much in magnitude we are taking the force? Twenty five newton. Then there would be its weight, there would be normal reaction from the floor, and there was tension. So these are all the forces which are acting on it. It's weight M2G, and let's say this is the normal reaction N2 acting on it. And under the action of all these forces, it is having some linear acceleration along the horizontal direction which we don't. So ye ho gaya M2 ka free body diagram. Now similarly, M1 ka free body diagram, what all forces are acting on that? That is somewhat simpler because the number of forces is less, first of all.
secondly there is no force acting which is in a general direction yes ask me i think it is correct now no m1g kitna tha it is 100 newtons this one was i think 10 kg right and this one was 15 kg and this mass is i mean this normal reaction is n1 this tension is there and this is also having the same linear acceleration So we are done with the first step of our free body diagram method. That is, we have made free body diagrams and shown all the forces acting as vector arrows. Me, F का component होगा ना बेटा? आज भी we have to break F into components. You understand me? So 10 kg, 15 kg, the force is 25 newtons and the angle is 37. We have taken all that into account. 10 kg, 15 kg. So first of all, make sure that you are clear with these free body diagrams. Okay. Next, we have to. In this case, we have to resolve. So before resolving, we have to select our coordinate frame. So in this case, how we'll take our coordinate frame? The blocks are accelerating horizontally, so it makes sense to take the horizontal direction like this as our x-axis, and take this as our y-axis. So this is our system of axes. So having done that, we'll have to resolve this force F two. So this force F F over here. Has to be resolved. So, the diagram below. Let us show. Instead of that force, let us show its components. So, F X component will become F cos theta. So, in this case, twenty five into four by five. This will become twenty newtons. Okay. F's y component will be F sine thirty seven. So twenty five into three by five. So it will be fifteen newtons. And apart from that. There is the weight of the object. It was one fifty newtons. There is some normal reaction which we have to calculate. And there is some tension. Also, which we have to calculate. And under the action of all these forces, it is having a linear acceleration p, which is along the x-axis. So these are the forces in resolved form for M two. M two free body diagram. After resolution of forces, in this case, there is only one force which had to be resolved. But anyway, M one we don't need to resolve. We can keep the F B D the way it is. So M one's F B D we just keep the way it is.
just a moment. So understood now. Now we've got the FBDs. So we've come up to that step where we've shown the forces, we've resolved them, we've selected our axis. This is our x axis. This is our y axis. Now what we have to do is apply Newton's second law in each one. So, let us look at application of Newton's second law for the block M2 first. So, net force should be M2 into its acceleration E. Now, here what is happening? The acceleration's X component is only E because its Y component is Z. So, what that is telling us that summation of forces along the X axis should be equal to mass into acceleration. And what this is telling us, summation of the forces along the y-axis should be zero. Okay, if you look at the situation of M2, this is what is happening. It's accelerating horizontally with A, you can see. So because it's accelerating horizontally with A, that means the vertical forces are balanced. And the net horizontal force is this. Okay, so this is the net horizontal force equals mass into acceleration, whereas vertical forces are balanced. They are balancing each other because there is no vertical acceleration. So normal reaction is playing that role. It is self-adjusting to whatever that is required. So let's implement this equation. Okay, so this, so next, summation fx is equal to mass into acceleration. That gives us what? So along the x-axis, we have f cos theta minus t is equal to m2 t. Okay, so that is our first equation. And numerically, that will become 20 minus t is equal to 15 t. That becomes our first equation. Now the other equation we get from here is that this, so n plus f sine theta minus the weight should be zero because these two forces, normal reaction and this one, they are acting vertically upward. So they will come with positive sign, f sine theta and n2, whereas m2g is acting vertically downwards. So it will come with a minus sign. This equation will tell us that N2 plus 15 is equal to 150. Or in other words, N2 was our second equation. So this will directly give us the result that N2 is equal to 135. So the second equation is giving us a direct result. Whereas the first equation has two unknowns, so we have to tag it with another equation to solve it. Okay. So this is the complete solution of Newton's second law applied to the second law, M2. But it's not giving us a conclusive result yet because there are two unknowns, T and E. Now when we tie it together with the solution of the first block's equations, we'll see that we'll be able to solve and find out how much the tension T is and how much the acceleration T is. So like I have solved this, now I want you people to solve the two equations, the vertical and horizontal equation for the first block M1 also. And from that you will see, you will be able to solve. And on solving, you should be getting the acceleration as one point three three meters per second squared. And N2 you already got 135, whereas N1 you will get as 100 newtons. And you should get the tension as 13.3 newtons. So just try what I am saying yourself. Okay, Like I have solved the FBD equation for the second block. Now similarly, solve the FBD equation for the first block. This one. And then solve the equation simultaneously to eliminate tension and get acceleration and then substitute acceleration here. So 
you should be getting the values as like this. Yes, I will. What you are saying is correct. But remember here that we are applying the force continuously, so it is having an acceleration. If you apply the force for let's say one second, then it would develop a certain velocity in that one second. Then you stop applying the force, so that velocity would be constant. Here it's above and beyond that. Here we are continuously applying the force, so the velocity is continuously increasing. We have a uniform rate of change of momentum. You understanding the difference between the two values? Okay, so let us see what we will get on. Ah, understood, na, beta. Good. Uh, yes, I will tell the second equation and ask me what your answer now, na. Good. So, see, first block ke liye abhi equations kaise banega? Let's check that out. Okay. For M one, it is actually a lot simpler you know, because there are a lot less number of forces. So. For M1, summation fx should be equal to M1 T. So summation fx is only one force. So T is equal to M1 T. This is our third equation. Here. So here this is giving us T is equal to 10 T. Again, we can see that Ax is equal to A, Ay is equal to 0. Whereas summation Fy should be 0. In summation Fy, we have only two forces, N1 minus M1G. This is, zero. So this is our fourth equation. And this will simply give us that N1 is equal to M1G or N1 is equal to 100 newtons. So this is giving us this directly now. Similarly, we had this one directly. But the other two we need to solve. Okay. So that is where our simultaneous equation solving comes in. Okay. So to find this thing, tension and acceleration, we have to solve equations 1 and 3 simultaneously. Okay. So equation 1 was f cos theta minus t is equal to m2a. So this was actually 20 minus t was equal to 15. This was equation 1 and this was t is equal to m1a. Correct. So, 
close. I have written the axiation wrong above this. It will be 20 by 25, no? 20 by 25 is, okay, sorry, these are wrong. The axiation will be 20 by 25, which is 0.8. Okay. N1 is correct, 100 Newton. And T will come out to be uh, 80 Newton. So anyway, let's check out from here. So all you can do, uh, equation 3. Now, all you can do here, very simple, you can just add these two equations. So you get 20 is equal to 15 plus 10. T. Yeah, H. Or add these two equations, you will get F cos theta is equal to M1 plus M2. So we will get acceleration A as 20 by 25 or 4 by 5 or 0 0.8 meters per second square. And then we can substitute this back in the second equation. So we will get it as 8 newtons. Substitute in equation 2 or equation 3. So we get tension as m one so that is 10 to 0 0.8. So the tension is equal to 8 newtons. And what you can also do is you can check for consistency. So once you got this tension and you got this expression, you can also check the equations for consistency. So equation 1 was F cos theta minus T was equal to M2A. So F cos theta was 20. Now tension is 8. And this should be 15 into 0 0.8. You can just check that 12 is equal to 12. So it's like okay, so they're consistent. So that shows that we have not made any solving mistake. So that is just a matter of you know getting used to solving simultaneous equations, which you'll be doing so many examples, so many different types of examples, you'll get used to this. Don't worry. Yes, Ashmi and Snikita, the tension is 8 newtons, that's correct. Manas, all of you got this correct, Aman. So method of solving is clear, I hope. Now this free body diagram method and resolution of forces, this is the thing that can sometimes get complicated for us if there are too many forces involved. Like here we had to just resolve one of the forces F. But sometimes this can get a little tricky. So let's start looking at some, some of those examples like that. So hope these, these equations and the solving is clear to all of you finally. Now there are certain tricks and shortcuts and things we can apply. I will come to those also later. But at the moment, you know, whatever the number of objects you have in your system, whether they are two, three, or four, etc., and whether they are connected by strings or they are against each other, you know, applying normal reaction or whatever, just always tend to make separate free body diagrams. Go with the basic method, the fundamental method, and make sure that you have hundred percent competence in that first. Then later we will look at some shortcut tricks and all that we could have applied. All right, next example. We will do a problem similar to one we had done last time, but with slight variation which is going to make it tougher. We have a combination of two inclined planes. At this angle is 30 degrees 
and this angle is 45 degrees. Both are smooth inclines. And now we are having a spherical body, solid sphere kind of thing, which is resting. against this combination. So this is a solid sphere. Of mass 20 kgs. If G as 10 meters per second square. And these are two smooth inclined things. the solid sphere rests in contact against two smooth inclined surfaces. As shown. So Make a free body diagram and show all forces on the sphere. And from that, calculate the normal reactions N1 and N2 applied. By the surfaces at 45 degrees and 30 degrees to the horizontal, respectively. So, this is just like a repeat of the question we had done last time, but with the complication that you have two inclined surfaces instead of one wall and one inclined surface, you have two inclined surfaces. So just try this out.
Okay, so let me verify the answer. So let's start with the first step. So to understand the normal reactions directions, we have to be clear about one very simple point okay, that anytime you have an inclined plane, which makes an angle theta with the horizontal. This angle is theta. Then any object, whether it is a sphere or a block or whatever, any object that is lying on this, it will experience a normal reaction. In this sort of direction. Along this sort of axis, that is, you draw the vertical line. Then from this right angle triangle, you can see this angle will be theta. Or over here, this angle will be theta. Okay. So this is just a simple rule of thumb to remember that if the inclined plane is at theta to the horizontal, Then the normal reaction is at theta to the vertical because of this geometry. If this is theta, then this will be theta. It's simple. So keeping this concept in mind, now you can see that in this case, we had one inclined plane like this, another inclined plane like this. So this angle is let's say 30 degrees and this angle beta let's say is 45 degrees. So now the sphere that we have it's in contact at two places so it will experience two normal reactions let's say at this place it's experiencing normal reaction I am labeling as N1. <clears throat> like this. And at this point, it's experiencing N2. Like this. So, we will also realize that. At this point of contact, if I drop this, this angle will be beta, the same as that angle. And here, when I draw this vertical at this point, this angle will be alpha. So just magnify this a little more. So this angle here will be alpha, the same as this angle. And this angle here will be beta, which is 45 degrees.
and apart from that there is the shear zone grade okay, so that we will come to it. so next when we make the free body diagram of the shear how will that look when we make the fpd free body diagram of the shear there will be a total of three forces acting on it there will be this normal reaction n1 which i have shown over there so that n1 will be at 45 degrees to the vertical or horizontal it makes no difference because then there will be this n2 which will be at 30 degrees to the vertical that will be like this and there will be its own grade it will of course be vertically downwards so the weight was 200 newtons And this angle is 30 degrees, this angle is 45 degrees. So, after resolving the forces, we come down to this, we will have N one's two components, which will be N one cos forty five or N one by root two and N one sine forty five or N one by root two like this. Okay, then we'll have N two's components. Now, while making components, just remember the simple rule okay, that for components, if you have any force F, and it's making with some particular axis, it's making an angle theta. These axes need not be horizontal and vertical. Then, this component along the axis to which it's making theta, this component becomes F cos theta. And because this angle becomes 90 minus theta, so this component becomes F sin theta. And this is how we resolve. So by that logic here, this N2 is making 30 degrees with a vertical. So this component should be N2 cos 30. So that is root 3 by 2 N2. There is the horizontal component will become the sine 30 component. It will be N2 by 2. And the last force which we did not need to resolve, it's already vertical, is the weight. So you know it's 200 degrees. So this is the free body diagram with the forces resolved. Now we will come to the step where we apply Newton's laws. Now, since the body is at rest, that means it is at equilibrium. Okay. Meaning that its acceleration is zero meaning that the net force acting on it should be a null vector. Okay. So now we will take that in terms of x and y. So summation fx should be 0 and summation fy should also be 0. 
So along the x-axis, if you see n2 by root 2 minus n1 by 2 should be 0. See, this is, so I have written it in reverse order. So this force should balance this force. So from this we are getting the relation that N2 should be equal to root 2 times N1. So that's our first equation. We have two unknowns, N1 and N2, so we need two equations. For the second one, you can see the vertical component of this one is N1 by root 2. The vertical component of that one was root 3 by 2 n2 minus weight should be 0. So this one will give us another equation now that n1 by root 2 plus root 3 by 2 n2 should balance the weight which is 200 newtons. So that is our second equation. So I am just, so just minimize this a bit so you can once again go through the resolution of the forces which is a very critical step and the this thing the equation formula. But even before that, make sure that you understand how we got the angles. The angles are very important. So there we are using this rule of thumb. Ah, so what is surface pillar, right? So Rakshit, that will not show up in the free body diagram of the sphere. No? In the FBD of the sphere, we have to only show the forces that are acting on the sphere. Okay, so just, just remember this simple rule of thumb that if any inclined surface is making theta with the horizontal, then any body here will experience normal reaction. Now that normal reaction force will be making that same theta with a vertical. E angle theta because this angle is theta. Yeah, Aman, so you'll get some answer like that. So, first of all, hope this is clear. From this diagram, how we got the free body diagram. And then resolve the forces. So, further we're getting this. Okay. So, once we get this now, we convert this into equations, so which is very simple, basically. Because there are two vertically upward forces and one vertically downward forces force so that's your second equation whereas along the horizontal x-axis there's only one force i mean there are only two forces which are balancing each other so our system of axes is like this Okay, now solving is pretty simple. What we'll do is substitute this in equation B. Okay, so substitute n2 equal to root 2 n1 from equation 1 into equation 2. So you'll get n1 by root 2 plus root 3 by 2 n2, which is root 2 times n1 is equal to 200. So we can see n1 by root 2 1 plus root 3 ho jayegal because I'll cancel this. Okay. So this is equal to 200. So n1 can be written as 200 root 2 upon root 3 plus 1. 
So this is okay. We can leave the answer this way also, or we can rationalize the denominator. We can say that n one is two hundred root two into root three minus one upon three minus one. Okay, upon rationalizing, multiply divide by root three minus one. We can do this step. Okay, so that will become hundred root two into root three minus one. Or that is approximately 141 into 1.73 minus 1. Whatever that is, we can calculate. And n2 is equal to how much now? n1 by root 2, isn't it? Or n1 root 2, n1 root. Okay. So that will become. Two hundred into root three minus one, or approximately two hundred point seven. Now see, this equation is like this: that n1 by root 2 is equal to n2 by 2. So yes. Nikita and Manas, your answers are correct. Only that I have rationalized the denominator. It's fine. I mean, so after rationalizing, it's not always necessary to rationalize the denominator. Also. Okay, let me check once again. Should not have mixed up n1 and n2. I don't think I have. Yeah. N one by root two plus root three by two n two is equal to n g. That's one equation. And n one by root two is balancing n two by two. That's correct. Okay, now actually, because this was a situation where we were balancing three forces, there is also another method that we can use, and that is called the Lamy's theorem method. Remember, towards the end of vectors, we were discussing those special theorems, and Lamy's theorem was one of them. So, in a special case where we are looking at The resultant of three forces being zero, we can invoke Lamy's theorem and save a little bit of steps. Okay. So you can complete the solving part later in case you haven't read it. Okay, just make sure the three-body diagram was clear to all of you. But before we move on to the next problem, ah, I'm coming to that. Okay, so because. Here, the body was in equilibrium at 
under the action of three forces. Lamy's theorem can also be used to solve for the forces. So let's <clears throat> let's take a recap of Lamy's theorem. Lamy's theorem gives us the condition for a plus b plus c to be zero, the sum of three vectors. And that says that if we draw the vectors from a common origin, suppose this vector here is labeled A, this one is labeled B and this one is labeled C. Now the angle opposite A is alpha. The angle opposite B is beta and the angle opposite C is gamma. Then E plus B plus C equals to zero implies this implies that the magnitude of vector E divided by sine of the angle between B and C, that is sine alpha, will be equal to the magnitude of B divided by sine beta, will be equal to the magnitude of C divided by sine gamma. This is a condition for the resultant of three vectors to be zero. This comes from the sine rule in triangle. You can just make a side note of this, Lamy's theorem business. Okay. And then we'll see how to apply it in the previous question. I'll also show you the logic of this, where this comes from. Yeah, if the body is not in equilibrium, then we have to apply F is equal to MA. Net force is equal to mass into acceleration. So that becomes a different situation. If you want. Okay. This is specific for the condition of the resultant of three forces to be zero. And you will understand that the resultant of three vectors to be zero also means that if you draw them head to tail, they should form a closed triangle. So that's where it comes from. So if you draw these vectors head to tail, you will see that E, B, and C for the resultant should to be zero. Should be forming a closed triangle like this. But this vector is A in our diagram. You can see from here. This vector is C and this vector is B. And the angle between B and C, this exterior angle is alpha. Okay. The angle between E and B. This exterior angle is gamma. And this angle is beta. So, for example, within the triangle, you can see that this angle is 180 minus alpha. This angle is 180 minus gamma. 
like we just drop a perpendicular here and suppose this perpendicular is y then you can see that sin of 180 minus alpha is equal to y by c and you can see that sin of 180 minus gamma on the other side is the same perpendicular y but divided by e okay so this tells you that sin alpha is y by c and this tells you that sin gamma is y by e so divide the two equations to get sin alpha by sin gamma is equal to e by c or e upon sin alpha is equal to c upon sin gamma now similarly for this triangle if you drop another perpendicular you get the relation between the other two because this is e this is c this is b now for example if you drop a perpendicular here and this is some z or something then you would have to consider these two angles and this one was gamma and this one was beta so now you'll have to consider these two angles this angle which is 180 minus beta and this angle here which is 180 minus gamma so considering these two in the same manner now you will get that c upon sin gamma is equal to b upon sin beta when you compare this relation and this relation together now you get the statement of lamis theorem so lamis theorem comes from very simple trigonometry nothing very complicated but it just gives us a very easy way to analyze the equilibrium of three forces case in newton's laws Okay. So let us use Lamy's theorem in this particular case. So in our particular free body diagram, for this above example of that spherical body, we had this equation. We had mg acting vertically downwards. That was two hundred newtons. We had. this normal reaction we that was n1 which was acting at 45 degrees to the vertical and we had n2 which was acting at 30 degrees to the vertical and the sum was zero mg as a vector plus n1 as a vector plus n2 as a vector was zero because the body was in equilibrium so now if you see this angle is 135 degrees this whole angle is 150 degrees and this whole angle is 75 degrees okay so the condition for this will become mg upon sin 75 should be equal to n1 upon sin 150 is equal to n2 upon sin 135 So 
if we just solve this, this will quite easily give us the result. That was coming from earlier. Okay. Now sine 75, we can write as sine 30 plus 45. So that will become 1 by 2 into 1 by root 2 sin A cos B plus cos A sin B. So root 3 by 2 into 1 by root 2. So that is 1 plus root 3 divided by 2 root 2. Okay. And that is your sin 75. And of course you know that your sin 150 the same thing as sine 30, so that's half, and sine 135 is the same as sine 45, so that's 1 by 2. So substituting these over here, we will get mg upon 1 plus root 3 divided by 2 root 2 is equal to n1 divided by half is equal to n2 divided by 1 by so we can say 2 root 2 times mg which is 200 divided by 1 plus root 3 is equal to 2n1 is equal to root 2 times n2. So from this you can directly see that n1 is 400 upon root 3 plus 1 which you can rationalize the denominator and write it as 200 into root 3 minus 1 and n2 is equal to oh sorry this was 200 root 2 this will become 100 root 2 minus 3 this 2 will cancel so we'll have We can write as this. Whereas n2 will be the root 2 will cancel. Okay. So, all in all, whenever we have equilibrium of three forces. You can use Lamy's theorem as the preferred method rather than resolving the forces. Once you have shown the FBD with the angles, you can directly use Lamy's theorem. That is A upon sine alpha is equal to B upon sine beta equal to C upon sine alpha. So I'll just leave you at the moment for going through this. But remember, this is only for the specific case where there is equilibrium of three forces. If there is more than three or there is no equilibrium, that is, there is some net force because the body is accelerating, then we cannot invoke Lamy's theorem. Take understanding that this is specifically for the equilibrium of three forces because only when the sum of three vectors is zero, you are getting the triangle. Na? So it is specifically coming from the geometry of the triangle. That's why. Just make a note of here.
yeah man we'll be discussing the assignment in the next lecture because okay. couple of more problems but see after today's lecture i think you will be better able to also resolve some of the questions yourself from the assignment so give it another try all right let's come to our next question so you know once you understand the questions we are doing in class today fully you will get a better idea of how to handle problems of newton's laws so in the next situation we have again the smooth inclined plane at 37 degrees to the horizontal in the first case the block of mass m equal to 12 kg is released on the inclined plane you want to find its acceleration and the normal reaction acting on it in the second case an external force of magnitude 15 newtons is applied horizontally on it against the plane so again find the acceleration and normal reaction in the second case what we are doing is but remember that's the second case not in the first case we are applying a horizontal force like this it's trying to act against the inclined plane okay, like this and that force is of magnitude take g as 10 and solve the question just try this out and again start with the free body diagram anything in newton's laws from now you will start with the free body diagram by showing all the forces acting so in the first case this f is not there okay in the second case along with the other forces there is also the horizontal external force which we are applying of 15 newton magnitude first case is very easy there are only two forces acting on it weight and normal reaction now weight which will act vertically downwards normal reaction which will act at 37 degrees to the vertical because the inclined plane is at 37 to the horizontal the acceleration so then the acceleration will have a magnitude of 6 meters per second so in the first case okay. 
and the normal reaction 96 newtons So let us understand the free body diagram in the first place. The normal reaction that the inclined plane will apply will be along and along with that there will also be this angle will be theta So, so, strictly showing it as a free body diagram. These are the forces. Now the thing is, see, here you will understand that the body is accelerating along which direction? It's accelerating down the inclined plane. That's accelerate. So here what we'll do is, since the body accelerates, along the inclined plane. So for convenience, x-axis is taken parallel to inclined surface. Okay. And y-axis is taken normal to inclined plane. So this becomes a critical step for us. Our choice of axis will now become such that this will become our x-axis. And this will become our y-axis. Instead of taking horizontal and vertical, because the acceleration is along the inclined plane, so it will be easier to resolve the forces taking the inclined plane as our x axis and the perpendicular to the inclined plane. Yes, ask me that's correct. The acceleration will be 6 meters per second square. So, for that convenience, we will be taking this as our y axis and we will be taking this as our x axis. So the normal reaction we don't need to resolve, it's already along the y-axis, but mg will need to be resolved. So to resolve mg, we'll have to keep in mind that this angle, so mg has a magnitude of 
How much was it? Twelve kg. Okay, so one twenty noodles. Just give me a moment, please. So MD has a magnitude of one twenty newtons, and theta was thirty seven newtons. So I'll show it in the same diagram here now. That we are resolving MD into these components. This component will become MD cos theta, and this component will become MD sine theta. And once we have resolved it into components, we can remove out MD because I've already shown it as its components. Okay, so cancel out MD. So now there are instead of the two forces MD and normal reaction, we are showing the two components of MD: MD cos theta and MD sine theta, and normal reaction. These are the forces which are acting. So the actual force MD is replaced with its two components: MD cos theta and MD sine theta. Okay. Now we can also see that the body. Is accelerating along the x-axis. So the acceleration of the body being along the x-axis, accelerating like this. So our summation f(x) will become m into e because e exists here. Whereas summation f(y) will be zero. The net force perpendicular to the inclined plane will be zero because there is no acceleration along the y-axis. so what will this tell us this will tell us that mg sin theta is equal to ma or that e is equal to g sin theta or that e is as a magnitude of 6 meters per second square Whereas, what does the second equation tell us? That along the y-axis, the net force is zero. So, n minus mg cos theta is equal to zero. So, the normal reaction should balance mg cos theta, which in this case is twelve into ten into four by five. So, the normal reaction will be ninety-six newtons. Whereas the acceleration was six meters per second square. This is the complete solution of the first part. All right, people. This is clear. I hope. Now the second part we have to just adjust a little bit. That along with this, there is also the horizontal force F. Okay, so let's come to the second part then. So in the second part, what is happening is that we have that additional horizontal force.
so we are pushing this horizontal force f there is mg which is acting vertically and there is normal reaction And let's assume that the body still accelerates down the inclined plane because the force is comparatively less. Because the force was only 50 newtons and mg is 120 newtons. So it's like gravity is still going to dominate. So now let us convert this into a free body diagram. These are our actual forces. Acting. Now the inclined plane is along this line. The normal to the inclined plane is along this line. So we'll still select these as our x and y axis because the acceleration is along the inclined plane. Because our acceleration is along the incline, our choice of axis will still be the same. It will not be vertical and horizontal. We will be taking x axis parallel to the inclined plane and y axis perpendicular. Same way as we did earlier. Next thing is we need to resolve the forces correctly. For that the angles become important. So in this diagram you can see that this angle here was theta. So here this angle will become theta. And again this angle will become theta. Okay. So in this diagram this is theta. And this The incline is making theta with a the horizontal, so the normal to the incline will also make theta with a the vertical. That simple rule of thumb to remember. So now let us resolve the forces. So let's start by resolving the force F. The force F, if you resolve. It has an x component which is actually along the negative x axis and that will be f cos theta. It has the y component which is along the negative y axis, it will be f sin theta. So this is resolved. Okay. Now similarly let's resolve mg. So mg will have the y component now is along the negative y axis of mg cos theta. Whereas it will have the x component like this, which is mg sin theta. So mg is resolved. So this is the critical step in this problem actually. Showing the forces properly in the free body diagram so that we don't mix up the angles okay. and then being able to resolve the forces. Now under the action of all these forces, what is happening? The body is accelerating along the x-axis like this. Okay. Uh, I'll just verify the answer with them. So here, 
our x component of acceleration is zero and our y component of acceleration is zero. So that means summation f x is equal to m a. So that over here will tell us that m g sine theta minus f cos theta. That should be equal to m a. This should be equal to m. So, and this should tell us that summation f y should be zero. So that is n minus m g cos theta minus f sin theta should be zero. Because these two are acting along the negative y axis and n is acting along the positive y axis. Okay. So this will tell us that. एम जी साइन थीटा कितना हो जाएगा इट बी वन ट्वेंटी इन टू थ्री बाई फाइव बिकॉज थीटा वॉज थर्टी सेवन डिग्रीज ओके बी सेवेंटी टू जस्ट अ मोमेंट है सर वी शेयर द तो सेवेंटी टू न्यूटन हो जाएंगे वेर इज एफ कॉस थीटा विल बी फिफ्टी इंटू फोर बाई फाइव सो दैट इज फोर्टी न्यूटन सो दिस विल बिकम सेवेंटी टू माइनस फोर्टी इज इक्वल टू द मास विच वॉज ट्वेल्व के जी इंटू थ्री सो दैट इज डेलस दैट आर एक्सप्रेशन How much? Thirty-two divided by twelve. Approximately two point six seven meter per second. Whereas this will tell us that normal reaction is equal to mg cos theta plus f sin theta. So mg cos theta. One twenty into four by five, ninety six meters, and f sine theta is fifty into three by five. You can see that Just a moment, guys. My net connection is a little bit dicey today. Okay, so this is showing us that our normal reaction is becoming ninety-six plus thirty, or one twenty-six newtons. So these become our final answers. Yes, that is correct, Ashwin. Okay. so yes a little bit of patience is required while solving the equations but more importantly the critical step in all these questions is the resolution of the forces after you make the free body diagram so you have to be very very patient and you have to be very careful in making sure that you have labeled all the angles correct now otherwise if you make a mistake in the resolution there is going to be a problem with the answer okay so getting from this step this diagram here to this proper free body diagram with the forces properly resolved that's a very critical step if that is the step where most of the mistakes happen in application of newton's laws otherwise this chapter is very easy in terms of theory there is nothing there is just one line that net force is equal to mass into acceleration but everything is in the implementation of the free body diagram and its application properly okay so guys this is where we conclude today's session okay thanks for attending and thanks for your patience and uh, i'll be sending another worksheet which will have this level of problems only so both worksheet 2 and worksheet 
uh, you try to attempt most of the questions with the free body diagram properly explained to you and also with the concept of tension explained to you today you should you should be able to attempt most of the questions and next lecture will mostly go in discussion of the worksheets okay, we are done more or less with the theory of the first part of course we have to discuss system of pulleys that will be the next next part of the course and after that there will be friction okay so i will send the recordings and the notes by today beta i will send the recording and notes by today okay that's it thanks for attending today In the meantime, if you have attempted any questions from worksheet two and they are not clear to you, uh, you can always send me a WhatsApp message. I'll help you out with it. You don't need to wait for the next lecture. Okay. I'll try to give you some hints so that you can carry on with those questions.